Yeah. And then you go on about your 25 years of your career. Yeah. I'm wondering, do you find it now harder than ever to kind of unpick narratives or false news stories, especially within social media where it travels so fast and people are so likely to believe it straight away that even great editorial finds it difficult to put through? Um, do I find it harder to do that now? Or, I mean, you're talking about stories today or when I look back over stories I've done in the past? What, what, what do you... Stories today in terms of it's just hard to get um, kind of clean, untampered editorial through the noise of social media in different, um, in different conferences, in different viewers. I think... Uh, I'm not going to make you happy with this answer. I think it's kind of... It's, it's plus and minus. So, and I mentioned this company, this Dublin company, Storyful, which you, which you may know about. It was bought recently by News Corporation. Their business model is to go online and look at all this citizen video generated material from uh, Libya, started in Libya, and, and then uh, a lot of it's from Syria now. Uh, literally, people with their cell phones putting it out of the window when a tank goes by and hoping they don't get their hand shot off and, and you know, then it goes online. And some, a lot of it's probably real, some of it may not be real. Um, the challenge that they set themselves is to, to decide, is this what it purports to be? And they have various, you know, they'll use weather reports and they'll analyze license plates to see if that corresponds to a, the plate of a city or a country where it's supposedly from and they'll, they'll go on, uh, you know, uh, uh, local radios and see if, you know, it was stuff reported at that time. So I think uh, th there's an immense amount of material out there, a lot more than there would have been 20, 30 years ago when if uh, a correspondent wasn't there, there was no evidence of what happened. Um, so that's the plus side. The, 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 the downside is, one, who knows how much of this stuff is real or what is not being shown. Um, and secondly, there is a... a, a you know, you, you've got to think that the, the motivation for a lot of this social media generated content is sensationalist. It's not informational. These are not, I mean, I'm not saying these people are responsible, but, but they're not trained journalists. They're mostly people in their neighborhood and they see something extraordinary happening and it could be a car crash, it could be a, a, you know, a meteorite falling from the sky or it could be a war atrocity. But it's, oh my God, look at that, and put up the camera. And so the approach to that is let's get the most sensational images and post them online because my buddies can't wait to see this. That's not the, if you like, the, uh, <laughs> the, that's, that's not what we would hope from in a journalistic enterprise because you need to say, well, what was really happening here? How do you frame it? And to, to, we were talking earlier about, you know, casualties. What's the context? Um, and, you know, we, we've seen uh, with some of the videos out of the U.S. Of, of, of police activities, often what you don't show is as important, if not more important, than what you do show. So, so I, it's kind of a bit of one and a bit of the other. Clearly, there's a lot more material out there, but then you have to, you, you have to wonder what was the motivation for it being put out there, and how do you kind of filter that? It's, it's not an easy one.